Hello friends, myself Dr. Anurag Tiwari and today I will be discussing through this video the important instruments which are used in orthopedic surgery and they are most important when it comes in your exams. There will be a different station sometimes in the viva and you will be asked the instruments. There were basic things which you should know. You must be identifying the instrument what is being asked. You must know the identifying features and few things about the surgery in which it is used. The surgical steps or something about the surgery, one or two lines, it should be, it is expected that you should know. So first we start with the basic pins which are used in the orthopedic surgery. I will start with the most basic instrument or the most basic implant that is the K-wire. So this is the most basic in the orthopedic surgery, the K-wire, the identifying feature is this is smooth throughout its length and it is pointed at both the ends. So the both the ends are pointed and it is used mainly in the fixation of small bones like phalanges, metacarpals and the small bones of the foot and the hand and it is also used in children near the joint when there is a fracture supracondylar humerus when there is a fracture lateral condyle humerus there you use the for fixation of the fracture the second is almost same as the K-wire however the size is uh, different but the size is not the identifying feature or the differentiating feature. It is the smooth throughout its length like the K-wire but the one end is blunt and the other end is sharp. So this is identified by this property that uh, this feature that one end is blunt and the other end is pointed. So this is Steenman pin. I will tell you how and where it is used. And the third is the this pin. This is Denham pin. There is thread in the middle of the pin, one end is blunt and the other end is sharp. So these two pins you must know the differentiating feature, the Steenman pin and the Denham pin. The Steenman pin and Denham pin are used for skeletal traction. When we apply the skeletal traction it is because of this pin when we insert this into the bone and we give the traction to the bone. So why and where the traction are being used you must know the traction is mainly for alignment of the fracture ends for re reducing the muscle spasm to reduce the pain of the patient to maintain the alignment, to maintain the length. So these are the few points which are important for the traction. There are two types of traction. One is the skin traction and the other is the skeletal traction. They are mainly used in the skeletal traction. So it could be fixed or sliding. The fourth one is actually not an instrument. It is actually implant. This is square in shape. This is the cross section is a square when you cut this and you see the cross section image or the cross sectional the it would be like square in shape the one end is threaded the other end is sharp whereas on the other end the sharp end or the pointed end has this uh, notch this is actually the square nail or the talwalkar nail or the forearm nail they are used in the fixation of the diaphyseal fractures of radius and ulna this one is for the radius because this has the radial notch or you can say this is a notch in the pointed side whereas the, this the other type is again the same as the radial this is a uh, threaded at one end and pointed at the other end whereas the cross section is a square so this is for the ulna so this is the ulna nail this is the square nail another important is this is drill bit this is again the smooth throughout its length except for the uh, one end where there are the bone cutting edges are there or the bone cutting mechanism is given there and the, this point is sharp. The other end is blunt. This is actually a drill bit. It is used to make a hole in the bone. So it is usually made, made a drill in the hole before we place a screw in the bone in order to fix the plate to the bone. So another instrument I would like to use it after once I drill the bone. This is actually bone tap. The bone tap has a handle this and the other end is having threads and a flute this is actually a flute which is longitudinal so it is basically used to tap the bone it is used to make a thread in the hole in the bone the hole which we have made with the drill bit we will use this tap in order to make the thread the main mechanism or the main use of this tap is to make a thread in the uh, bone hole the we use it while we move it clockwise two times and anti-clockwise half turn so it is two turns and half turn, two turns clockwise and half turn anti-clockwise. The anti-clockwise turn is to remove the cut ends of the bone through this flute. After thread, after making the thread, we just insert the screws. So the screw has actually the main is the shaft diameter and the in over which there are multiple threads. 
so the shaft diameter is being created by the drill bit and the threads are being created by the in the hole in the bone by this tap and after tapping we insert the screw now again one important we left is this pin this is blunt at one end sharp at the other end and on the sharp side there are multiple threads they are the threads so this is basically known as shanch pin or shanch screw because of this presence of thread this is also known as a screw so don't get confused this is shanch pin or shanch screw it is used in the external fixator whenever there is a open fracture we use do not use the internal fixation we use the external fixation we insert this into the bone and we connect this assembly we connect this shanch pin into this assembly so i will show you how this is connected so this is mainly a universal clamp by which i have connected a rod or a connecting rod or a tubular rod with a pin this is shanch pin so we insert this into the bone there are there can be multiple pins two or three pin in the proximal fragment two or three pin in the distal fragment we reduce the fracture and we attach it with the this rod so this is universal clamp this is connecting rod or the tubular rod and this is the pin if you want to connect a rod with another rod we have a different type of clamp like if you want to attach this with a another rod so you will use this clamp this is actually a tube to tube clamp because there are two tubes can be connected there is a space for the two tubes like in this fashion you can connect it and this is known as a tube to tube clamp so this is the complete assembly of the external fixator you must know about the indications where it is used what are the complications what are its uses now how to insert this shanch pin is with the help of a t handle so this is actually a t handle this is t handle and this part in the front is known as jacobs chuck j a c o b apostrophe s that is jacobs chuck it is used to hold the pin we insert this pin into this hole and we tighten this manually and then with the help of this key we can tighten this is further and with the help of this t handle we used to insert the shanch pin into the bone once we have made the drill we have tapped the bone and we insert this shanch pin into the bone so this is the purpose of the t handle with jacob chuck with key so this is used in the external fixator so this we have covered now this is all about the different pins which we use in the orthopedic surgery now after this i would like to show you some instruments which are again almost same looking like they are almost the look alike so these are the four instruments you can see in this this is the periosteal elevator this has the one end is sharp the other end is beveled so this is only the cutting edge is only one and there is a thumb grip over here the periosteal elevator is used to strip the periosteum from the bone so by with this mechanism by holding this thumb over the thumb grip or the thumb rest you just peel off the periosteum to the bone it is used for in the internal fixation when you apply the plate over the bone it is essential instrument however now newer concept is we do not want to resect too much of the periosteum because periosteum is the blood supply to the bone so we do not want excess periosteum to be stripped off the second is this instrument is again the one edge is sharp the other edge is beveled so this is actually a chisel c h i s e l the chisel is used to cut the bone which are overgrowth or the protruding bone for example if there is a callus or any abnormal growth in the bone over the surface of the bone we can remove this by using this instrument and we put it this over the edge and we hammer this so this is actually chisel the third is the osteotome the osteotome is actually to cut the bone osteotome the name suggests osteo means bone the tome means to cut so it is used to cut the bone like in various osteotomies you use this osteotome for example the valgus osteotomy mcmurray's osteotomy for non union fracture neck of femur or for the dome osteotomy or for the uh, angular deformities the genu valgum genu varum cubitus varus valgus the medial edge or the lateral 
closing wedge osteotomy they are used the main differentiating features between the chisel and the osteotome is the osteotome has the both the edges are beveled the both the edges are making a beveled whereas on the chisel it is only the one edge is beveled the other edge is sharp now to differentiate between the chisel and the periosteal elevator is the periosteal elevator has this thumb grip the shape can be different however in this it is curved however it can be straight also so the main mechanism by which you will differentiate the main feature is the thumb rest there is no thumb rest over the chisel there is thumb rest over the periosteal elevator so periosteal elevator the chisel the osteotome and the last one is this instrument which has a scoop like of thing in the longitudinal dimension so this is basically a bone gouge the bone gouge is used to harvest the cancellous part of the bone from the iliac crest so once you have given the incision over the iliac crest you have removed the topmost of the cortico cancellous graft and in between the two cortical bone in between the two cortex of the ilium iliac crest you just insert this and with the hammer you can scoop it out the cancellous part so it is mainly used for harvesting the cancellous portion the pure cancellous portion of the iliac crest so these are the four instrument you know the differences and they are being used along with this this is known as hammer or mallet so this is to hammer the osteotome or the chisel or the bone gouge the periosteal elevator is not used with the hammer it is used with the hand and with the thumb over this thumb rest so i hope this is all clear these are all the instruments which are used in for the cutting the bone for taking out the bone graft or the periosteal stripping now again we come to another important set of instruments which looks more or less alike like this just first consider the scissor part so these are actually the scissors there are two types of scissor you can see here this one is having somewhat narrower the jaws are narrower and it has somewhat sharpness as compared to the this scissor this is actually a dissecting scissor this is the tissue dissecting scissor you hold the uh, scissor with one over the thumb and the other ring over the ring finger so it is hold in the ring and the thumb and it is used to used to dissect the tissues so it is a dissecting scissor and this one is actually a gauze cutting or the suture cutting scissor so this is also known as the mayo's type of scissor this is the mayo's one and this is a thick or a broader that is the jaws and the uh, pointed end is not pointed the front end is not pointed whereas in this case it is pointed for the easy dissection they can be straight they can be curved like in this case this is curved variety so these are the two scissor you must know the differences between the two and the another basic instrument which you use in the surgery this one is actually the artery forceps you can see the artery forceps this has the the jaws are actually serrated you can see this they have the serrations or they have the grooves here in order to hold the uh, tissues basically it is also known as hemostat it is used to control the bleeding to crush the blood vessels while in the bleeding when you have the during the surgery uh, multiple bleeders or the small sprouts when they come you can easily crush them with this and this has a self retaining or the self locking mechanism this is known as ratchet so just by holding this again with the ring finger and the thumb using the ring finger and the thumb you just hold them and the middle finger over this angle and the index finger should be like this in order to support the this instrument because this is a long instrument so just you hold them this like this and you crush this and you leave them so because of this ratchet mechanism this is self locking type so this is artery forceps or the hemostat and this is actually the same as the artery whereas it has a pointed end this is actually towel clip in order to clip the towel to the skin you just use this while in the draping so these are the two mechanism or the two instruments again we have now another important just to differentiate we have the other instruments into the view like same like this is the towel clip i have already told you this is the artery forceps or the hemostat this has the serrations or the grooves in the for the in the jaw inner side of the jaw now this instrument is actually 
the same as the artery forceps however in the jaw if you see carefully there is a longitudinal groove you can see that the, on the both the side there is a longitudinal groove it is actually to hold the needle of the suture it is a needle holder so needle holder is this now we are left with these two instruments this one is on the right this one is actually the cocker forceps and this one is alice forceps if you see carefully the alice there are the multiple tooth there are multiple tooth in the jaws in the pointed end and the front end and these are used to hold the hold the tough tissues like fascia the, the tough tissues are being hold with this alice and this is again a self locking type of mechanism because of this ratchet and this is a cocker forceps the cocker forceps the main difference between the alice and the cocker the cocker forceps has the single tooth on the one side and the two tooth on the opposite side you can see here very carefully this is there are two tooth and there are one single so when you combine them this gets closure like this this is actually a faulty one but yes this in this mechanism it gives you yeah in this way it gets locked and again the serrations on the jaw the alice and the cocker forceps are used to hold to grasp or to hold the tough tissues like the fascia and uh, sometimes the aponeurosis part so they are used in the surgeries for holding these tissues the cocker forceps however can also be used to remove a dead piece of the bone like the sequestrum or other bone fragment or the bone graft so that is the use of the cocker forceps that is more stronger as compared to the alice forceps so these all the instruments have been covered now we move on to the next just a few miscellaneous we are left with these two this one is the forceps the simple forceps or the tissue holding forceps this has no self locking type of mechanism and this is also known as thumb forceps that's why it is also known as thumb forceps these are the identifying feature there is a, for the thumb or to for the grip to the finger and the thumb and there it could be toothed or non tooth or the plain type of forceps or the tooth forceps so this one is a tooth forceps because there are tooth in the on this side so it is used to hold the tissues while you dissect while you dissect with the scissors so it is very important that you hold these with the thumb forceps like this and then you dissect it with the scissor so the main purpose is the tooth forceps and again when you do the suturing when you suture the skin or when you suture the other tissues it is important that you hold them and then you suture it with the needle holder so that is the main purpose the counterpart of this is the other one is the other forceps is the non tooth forceps the non tooth forceps is used to handle the to hold the blood vessels and the nerves the delicate tissues are being held with the non tooth otherwise the tooth forceps is used this is actually a scoop or the curet you can say the both the sides have the spoon like this thing this is the curet this is the oblong shape and this is circular in shape the other name is wokman's scoop it is also known as wokman's scoop or the simple bone curet it is used to curate the bony cavity so where we can curate is for example in the neoplasm like the giant cell tumor or the aneurysmal bones is where you do the curettage and the bone grafting so you just curate the cavities of the bones like this it is used for this purpose and that is why it's known as bone curate so these two are now gone so once uh, you are being asked about the instrument and you just tell the name of the surgery then they may ask you that uh, what is gct and how is it looking how do you identify the gct on x ray what are the radiological features what are the treatments so that's all so in this way the viva goes on now we are left with these retractors there are two retractors you can see that this one is actually a l shape so it is known as langenbeck so this is actually a langenbeck type of retractor langenbeck retractor it is used to retract the soft tissues during the surgery to retract the muscles to retract the fascia it is used to retract and this is used when you have the assistant suppose you do not have enough assistant for retraction then you use this type of retractor now this retractor is actually a self retaining you just use it you just apply this over the soft tissues and this has a self locking mechanism so once this is 
connected or this is a hold like this it is not going to collapse so this is actually a self retaining type of retractor otherwise you need the two retractor one on this side the other in this side and you need two assistants at least or one at least single assistant so this is langenbach retractor and this is self retaining retractor they are used to retract the soft tissues during the surgery now another set of instruments these are actually bone levers or you can also say bone spikes these are used to uh, they are used to retract or you can say they are used to deliver the bone out of the surgical wound so this is actually for the femur when you are doing the plating in the femur you give the incision you just reach to the bone now the bone is lying deep in the surgical wound so in order to get it out of the surgical wound for easy access then you can use suppose if i assume that this is the femur bone this is the phone and you just apply this and you give pressure so in this way if the bony fragment is lying just deep to the very deep or far away you just apply the here <coughs> apply here the instrument and you give pressure so that it comes out of the bony or out of the surgical wound so these are used as a bone spike or the bone lever and there are various types of bone spike now this is specialized type of this instrument or the bone lever is known as homan retractor this is homan retractor and this is simple the bone lever or the bone spike so these are the two which are used in the to extract the bone out of the surgical wound now we come to the bone holding forceps there are various types of bone holding forceps here we have the two types this is <clears throat> these are the two now this is actually a lane forceps or the lane bone holding forceps and this is actually known as ferguson bone holding forceps this has this type of claw as these these are used to hold the bone for reduction when you are doing the surgery on the fracture of the bone and you need to apply the plate you need to fix with a plate so if you have the two side so let us assume that this is one bone and this is another bone so what you will do you need the two bone holding forceps you will hold the bone like this and with the other bone holding you can use of any type and you will just hold this bone with this and you will reduce it and you will temporarily fix and then you will definitely fix with a plate so the purpose of this is to hold the bone out of the surgical wound and for aiding in the reduction of the bone so this is actually a ferguson type and this is actually the lane type of forceps it has the tooth in the front and the serrations for holding it properly the bone should not get slip so this is the main mechanism and it has a ratchet mechanism here again a self locking type of instrument so this is the self retaining type of forceps now we move ahead after we hold the bone we also apply the plate over it and we should have a plate holding forceps now these are the plate holding forceps or the plate holding clamps this is the basic of all that is ao type of the plate holding forceps the ideal the characteristic features are it has the two jaws the one jaw is having these serrations whereas the other jaw is smooth or pointed just like that so it is the this side is used over the plate so when you apply the this is the bone and if you have apply the plate over this bone so you will hold the plate with this like this so here in between the forceps and the bone there will be a plate and you apply like this so in order to have a firm grip that's why there are serrations over this so that the plate doesn't get slip and this has a self retaining type of mechanism with the help of this screw and rod you just tighten this and it is not going to slip so the main mechanism is here the self locking type of this and this is actually known as lomans clamp l o w m a n that is lomans clamp it is used to having a uh, aid in help in the reduction of the bone again a plate holding type of device this if this is the bone and you need to reduce it the bone with the plate you apply it like this and you just 
tighten this when you tightening this screw the other jaw is moving towards the previous one so in this way it gets tightened and it holds firmly the bone and the plate in between these two jaws so this is a sturdy type of or a more rigid type of the instrument in this way we are going to reduce this and we apply the plate so this is the low man's clamp and the other one is the plate holding simple plate holding forceps now again two similar looking type of thing two similar looking type of instrument don't matter with the size the size can be of any size the small or the large and this is the third variety is this one so we start with this one this is actually bone nibbler the identifying feature is just see the edges here these have the somewhat cavity like of thing or a curette like of thing and it is used to nibble the bone so you just whenever there is a fibrous tissue or the soft tissue over the bone you need to just remove them you will hold them the fibrous tissue or the soft tissue and you just take it out just you pull so it is used to nibble the bone or to nibble the soft tissue or the fibrous tissue and the, this instrument is actually bone cutter because there is sharp edges over the two jaws in comparison to the bone nibbler there is no sharp edges over the nibbler whereas in this case it is sharp so when you do when you just press this the play the anything between these edges will get cut so this is actually a bone cutter it is used to cut the bone for example in the osteophytes or any outgrowth over the bone then you cut with this instrument that is bone cutter another important uh, use of this instrument is you if you want to take a bone graft and you want to get the pieces of the bone graft so you just cut it them with this bone cutter so it is used to cut the bone graft into pieces it is used to cut the osteophytes or the any uh, protruded growth of the bone the third one is actually a plier you may have seen this this is general plier or which is used in the tbw or for holding the k wire to removing the k wire or even to cut the k wire you can cut the k wire by holding it this the holding the k wire over this slot and you when press it just a minute so we have this k wire you just hold this in between this slot and when you press it the k wire will get cut so this is the mechanism by which the plier works so this is the all about the plier <clears throat> okay so i think we have finished all the instruments what do we have the implant section will be covered in the next video thank you thank you so much